Hello.
Okay, class is a little late. My apologies about that. This is geometry and topology. I'm going to be passing a uh, sign-in sheet. My name is Professor Niazi. I will now be passing out a handout you'll be doing. I wanted to go over our syllabus. However, uh, I don't have my computer connected to that thing. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna have you guys read the syllabus um, on your own time. Basically it highlights the structure of the course. What we'll do at the beginning of the course is have a mini lecture where I talk about some of the stuff that we'll be doing in class and giving a little bit of explanation on what kind of stuff you will expect on your homework. This is an interactive class, so uh, you guys are going to be part of in groups. So pass these around. Uh, I guess you have the option of partnering in groups or just working on your own and here's some like disinfected and stuff. You will also be needing rulers. So I'll be handing these out here. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> this is supposed to be a fun class. It's not super strict. However, I do have uh, high expectations out of you. Um, I don't really tolerate unprofessional behavior. I don't really tolerate being overly rowdy, but I do mind you guys having fun. And I do want you guys to have fun, but you need to be 100% on task. You can have fun all the while being on task. Does that make sense? So I don't want you on your phones unless you're doing a calculation required for your assignments. I don't want you guys talking about stuff that doesn't regard to mathematics. You're in this class to learn, and I expect the utmost level of professionalism out of you guys. But at the same time, I'm not really a, a drill instructor here. I'm a mathematician, and I want you guys to have fun. The point of this class is for you guys to learn in an interactive way, in an inquiry-based learning way. Inquiry-based learning means you inquire which means you have a thought, a question, something you wish to investigate. And then after you do that, you go out with your brain and try and discover the answer to your question. So it's actually a lot of fun. And you guys are gonna have a real good time. Before in the past, this course was run with like groups of two and four and stuff like that. Um, I understand that the times are a little bit different nowadays. And that, uh, thank you. Does anybody need rulers? All right, and uh, where is there any extra sheets for this young lady in the front? Thank you. The times have changed, and you know, all that social don't touch me type stuff. Is, is thank you. Anyways, <laughs> you go, ma'am. Yeah. So, yeah, you can work in partner, I don't care, you know. I don't care if you guys work in groups. I don't care if you work alone. This course was meant to be in groups, but you know, things have changed, whatnot. Uh, as I said before, the beginning of the lecture will be a mini lecture. I was supposed to go over the syllabus, but I'm just kind of verbally doing it now because I don't have the, the projector. Maybe next class we'll go over it quick. In a nutshell, this class has no textbook. You guys will have all of your information given to you off of handouts. You are expected to complete this assignment today and turn it in, put your name on it. If you work on groups, all the group 
all the individuals in the group will put their names on it. <clears throat> that way I can record attendance for you. <clears throat> uh, after that, I honestly want you guys to have fun. I want you to enjoy your time and I want you to be enthusiastic. But if I start talking or if I want to address the whole class, which will be very obvious when I do that, you guys stop talking. Okay, understood? And then also no cell phones unless you're doing a calculation. I encourage you all to have uh, calculators, but if you don't or don't mind, you can pull it out and compute, you know, what's 143 divided by 77.5. Okay, you can go ahead and do that. But at the end of the day, if you're on your form of technology and you're doing it, it I take that as a sign of disrespect towards me and a sign of disrespect towards your classmates. All right? Okay, after that, stuff is out of the way. Let's take a, uh, a short amount of time because I wanna let you guys loose. Uh, a short amount of time talking about what is gonna be on your handout today. As you can read on the first paragraph, it says the word geometry comes from the Greek words earth, geo, and metri, measurements, okay? Mathematics is not even arguably, but definitely the most important discipline invented by humanity. It is the way human beings are able to quantify reality, meaning it is a way that we will be able to predict situations, okay? And assign values to those situations. Like I calculate that on this day, this asteroid shower will happen. Or I calculate that if I build this bridge this way, that it can handle this many pounds of weight without breaking up. It is because of mathematics that we have all of the forms of technology we have today. Electronics, cars, airplanes, cell phones, you name it, clocks, everything, light. Mathematics gave birth to science and physics. Physics gave birth to chemistry. Chemistry gave birth to biochemistry and the understanding of the fundamentals of biology. Biology gave birth to psychology and so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, science gave birth to technology. And technology is why we have air conditioning, so we're not hot. It's why we have transportation, so we don't have to walk everywhere. It is of the utmost importance, okay? Now, how do mathematicians quantify reality? Well, we have to associate with an entity or an object a quantifiable value. What is a quantifiable value? It's just a number, okay? How many sheets of paper? Two sheets of paper. How much weight can you bench press? 115s in each hand, for instance. So, Things like that of that nature, these are things that are quantifiable. That is why you're in this class going to be doing measurements, okay? You guys are going to quantify the length of, let's say, your table. First, as you see, you're going to use like a body part, like a piece of your finger. How many pieces of my finger is this table? One, two, three, four. You're going to estimate it like that, calculate it. Then you're going to use your ruler. As the handout states, there is parts where you find a body part, you estimate it to be an inch, and then you utilize that to do various measurements, okay? Then around three and four, you then will utilize the actual ruler to quantify the veracity of your statements. What does that mean? What does it mean to verify? Veracity and verify stem from the same Latin word veritasium, which means truth. And so you want to see how true was your measurement. Of course, your measurement won't be 100% accurate. These rulers are not 100% accurate. But you got to try. And the more you try, the more you refine your thinking, the better your estimates become. Okay? Almost done. Almost time to let y'all loose. Okay? Let's go to the second page now. You'll be using your stride length to measure distances, you know, like what's your stride length and stuff like that. You will be then expected 
to have a little bit of working knowledge of the Pythagorean theorem. Who here could tell me what is the Pythagorean theorem? And what does it relate to? Oh yeah, that's right. A right triangle, okay? There's an A leg, a B leg, and a C leg. Who knows what this long leg is called? Hypotenuse. Very, very good. Now, what is the theorem of Pythagoras? Well, actually, it was discovered, evidence is that it was discovered a thousand years ago by the Mesopotamians prior to Pythagoras being born. But Pythagoras got the name on it, even though Pythagoras stole it from one of his students. But we call it the Pythagorean theorem. But anyways, regurgitate it for me, somebody. Ah. There we go. Okay, what does this mean? It means if I put numbers here, that it will actually satisfy this equation. So three squared plus four squared, does this in turn equal five squared? Well, this is nine plus a 16, does this equal 25? It does. Mathematicians for thousands of years have discovered this to be true, at least in Euclidean geometry. In non-Euclidean geometry, it's no longer true. But you guys don't have to worry about that. That's more of a mathematician thing. You could totally get into some of that if you want to go be a mathematician though, which I highly co-sign. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. The last thing I will say is that, remember, this theorem is powerful, not because it just trivially checks out like this, but because if you don't know one of these legs, and let me give some different numbers here. Okay, then you can solve for that variable. If a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then I want to solve for a. That means I can algebraically solve for a by subtracting the b squared from both sides and then taking the what of both sides? Square root. Excellent. So this implies I get a is equal to technically plus or minus square root of c squared minus b squared, but we'll take the positive valued solution because all of our metrics in Euclidean geometry are supposed to be positive definite. Okay. Let loose. Do your assignment. You can join in groups if you want, or you can do it alone if you want. Feel free to cover yourself with a hand sanitizer if you want over here. I can't hear you. What? Oh, sure. You can get one. I just need the second one. Oh, just a second yeah. one? Mm -hmm. Does everybody have all their sheets of paper? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but if you turn in one sheet, all of you must put your names on it. Okay. And once you register, okay. 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 But your homework, you have to do on your own. Yeah. And I will give you the homework all over Okay. Yes, ma'am. What are the facts? I don't care. I am
I'm a little, we're a little confused on what the last last thing's actually wanting us to do. So about the Pythagorean triples? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to discover Pythagorean triples. So that are, that's, let's see, is it defining, is it defining the Pythagorean triple here? A, B, C are called integers. The set of three numbers is called the Pythagorean triple. For example, three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple because three squared plus four squared is equal to five squared. Okay. So find some numbers that do this. Okay. So, right? okay. Not these ones, but other ones. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, I 
Um, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that back so I'm sure that. someone else is going to need it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, those of you who turned yours in, come and get your homework. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, get another one from the yes. Those of you that are done, you can either stay and get help on your homework or you can leave. Good work. Thank you for being professional. Take a photo. That works. Email it. email it. Take a photo. Email it. That works. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good work. work. <laughs> Good job being professional. Um, and then if I have questions, I'll just email you. I Absolutely. Guess. That works. Okay. Uh, we didn't get to go over the syllabus, but there's also math tutoring available. So you could always go to tutoring as well. Email me. We can think we can figure it out. Just reach out to okay. me and I'll help you. Okay, I want I really to see every single one of you that. succeed. Yeah, so. I want to see all of you succeed. Okay, all right. thank you. Good job. Hi, we had a question on understanding this part with the triples. Mm -hmm. So this is a Pythagorean triple because it satisfies this relation. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Can you find other numbers that do that? Yes. Yeah, you can. And so the best way to is just like, Pick some and check if it works. Okay. So let me pick some. Let's see if like one, one let's see if like one, two, and three work. You know? Is one squared plus two squared equal to three squared? I mean, no, because this is four and that's five. So yeah, five they don't equal. Nine, nine. Right. But you keep picking and okay. checking. Okay. And once you found one, record it. Okay. And then once you found another one, record it, and then you'll be done. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Can we just, oh, are we doing this part right? Let me check. Uh, this one? Yes. If a right triangle has a sh shorter size length 5 and 12, how long is the hypotenuse? So you square them to see what C is. So after you squared them, you added them to get 169. Mm -hmm. Then you took the square root of both sides to get 13. How would we be able to check if you're right? We could plug that in into a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, right? Yes. So what is your a equal to? Uh, 25. Your a is equal to 25? Yeah, yeah, your a is 5, right? Oh, yeah. Here, okay. And your b is what? Uh, 12. And you are hypothesizing your c is 13 according yes. to your calculations, right? I'll put a question mark there. Okay. The way to check every time whether you're right or not is to see does a squared plus b squared equal question mark c squared? Let's check. So five squared plus 12 squared, I hope it equals 13 squared, which is 169. This is 25 plus 144. I add that to that, I get 169. Cha-ching, you're right. You don't even have to ask me. You can always uh, verify it for yourself but never hesitate to ask me. Yeah. What I mean to say by that is, I'm not trying to avoid interacting with yeah. you guys. I'm just saying if I'm not around, yeah. that's how you can check it. So, okay, then I guess this one would, I think would be right now too. So then I guess we're confused on like, list more Pythagorean triples. Good question. Do they have to be consecutive numbers? No, no, that one's really interesting because it is, but yeah. they're not all like that. Okay. So yeah. matter of fact, we found a Pythagorean triple. Okay, that's what I was curious Here's a Pythagorean triple. Yeah. Because just because A and B equals C squared. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so they so can make be. make sure that. Okay, because that's what I was confused if I was doing that right. Mm -hmm. I thought they had to be. Consecutive. They don't have to be. That one is really mathematically yeah. interesting. They are, okay. but they're not all like that. Sweet. Okay, thank yes, you. Good work. Good question. Thank you. <laughs>
With that, Sam, I'll give you your homework. Did you turn your assignment in? Okay, turn it in and I'll give the rest of you guys your homeworks. Yeah, I totally get it. Thank you. Yeah. Homework and did you turn. Oh, you guys are yes. all the same. Okay. Thank you. Homework. Yes, I'll take the homework. Uh huh. Did all of your group members get homework? She gets it. Okay. All right. Here you go. Good work. Yes, ma'am. You're looking for like A squared, B squared, and C squared, like the numbers. Yes. But from the last exercises, like these two exercises, just pick ones that work. Pick ones that work. Okay. So three, four, five works. Uh -huh. Five, twelve, and thirteen works. And just find different ones. Find that two work. more sets of numbers okay. that work. Okay. Good work. <laughs> Okay. So, show me your how you're playing this game. Pick some numbers. 
For instance, you can pick one, two, three. You'll check that that doesn't work. So look, I look that out on the green. One squared plus two squared, does it equal three squared? It becomes one plus four, which is five, which does not equal nine, so that doesn't work. But three, four, five, take a look. Nine squared, I mean, uh, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, does that equal 25? It does. So that's how you play the game. Is that how you've been playing it? No, we said we were trying to decide that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
see one name on this. Well, yeah, we did it our own papers. Oh, you did your own? Yeah. Okay. Um, That's fine. So, do we just do it on notebook paper and then staple them and then give them to you when we come back? Or? You can. Okay. Or you can take pictures of them and email them to me. It just has to be before class starts, next class. Okay. That's so when it's due. Right before all class. Then are due before that homework, yeah. All this one you turned in is over? So, it's not like this is due this tomorrow this is due saturday okay so right cool. there that's all due tuesday perfect thank you 11 45. it's up to you whatever floats your boat just get it to me because the email will say when it got to me good work well done she has your homework you have my homework Okay. <laughs> 
All right. Maybe. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that. And here's your homework. Thank you. I'll take those. And here's your homework. Thank you. And where's your turned in assignment? Over there. Someone with coming. Okay. Good work. Thank you. Well done. Here's your homework. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good work. Thank you. Uh, you can staple that and I'll give you your homework. Great. There you go. I get the homework. Yes, ma'am. Good work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you please uh, staple that, I'll give you your homework. Good work. Good work. Here you go. It's part of yours. Here you go. Thank All right. you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Goodbye. You staple that for me. Trade. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good work. Here's your homework. Why are you putting it?